Hi guys, I'm Leo from MediaWay and today I'm going to show you how to use a green screen to film yourself and then add that footage into a Blender project. Previously in car animations, you might have used Mixamo or a virtual character, but by adding video footage, you increase the realism of the scene. I'll explain how to film a green screen, how to use the keying features in Blender, and then how to add that keyed footage into your Blender scene. If you hang on to the end, I'll show you what I made with it. Let's get started. You can get a cheap green screen cloth background from Amazon or eBay. Here I've set up in my kitchen with a couple of clamps to hold the cloth up. I'm using the tripod as a steering wheel for me to hold on to and everything is being lit from natural light from the windows. Don't forget to make a note of your camera's focal length and film yourself from a couple of different angles whilst thinking about how you'll use the footage in your Blender scene. Once you've got the footage, copy the files onto your computer. Let's start by opening up Blender and instead of clicking General like we normally do, click on the VFX button. This opens up the VFX workspace. Before we import our video to do our green screen cutout, uh, we're just going to make some changes to the setup. So just in the, um, the output properties tab, make sure the resolution is set to the same as your film resolution. For me, I shot this in 4K, so it needs to be 3840 by 2160. And also set the frame rate to whatever it is in your region, but for me in the UK, it's 25 frames per second. We're going to use about 250 frames of the video so you can leave this as it is. The next thing we're going to do is simply drag the green screen footage that you've taken with your camera or your phone, drag it straight into this window here. Uh, if we zoom out a bit on the timeline, the footage I took was about 40 seconds long. So I'm just going to trim this footage to the bit that I like. So end frame is going to be 1280 and the start frame, let's say 1030. Okay, that gives us 250 frames. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, um, we're gonna actually do a mask just around this part here because there's no point kind of trying to green screen out the bit that doesn't have a green screen. You want to get rid of all the janky stuff as well. So if you hop over into the masking tab up here, click on your footage that you've just opened and we want to click a new mask. Well, I'm gonna call this Leo mask. Okay, if you press Shift and A, we're going to add a square. You can see it just appears in the bottom left here. We're just going to drag these corners just to fit over so it covers my face and body. Doesn't matter too much about being accurate at this point. Okay, and quickly, another good tip just have a quick scrub through your timeline just to make sure any movements that you do don't go outside of this box that you've just drawn. Okay, so now we've drawn the mask, we're gonna hop back into the compositing tab. Okay, click use nodes, and you start to see some nodes come up. Let's just get rid of the render layers by pressing X. Press Shift A to add, and we're gonna search for a movie clip. And we've already got it open because we've loaded it up, so it should just be down there on the drop down. Hook up the image to the composite image. Let's also add a viewer node, Shift A, search. And we'll pop that over there. We'll also add the image into the image slot of the viewer node. And now we can see it in the background, okay? Another quick tip, if you've got Node Wrangler enabled, hold down the Shift key and do you use your right mouse, you can draw a line across here, and that makes a single node for you to kind of join those two up so you don't have too many nodes floating around. Right, let's just move those over here a little bit. Uh, if you want to move your viewport around, if you click the view tab, then click move, you can do this to help, help it all look a bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna get the keying done. So Shift A, search for keying and drop that just in between there and there. Just move it off across so you can still see my face. Okay, 
So this adds a king node. We're going to be using some of these controls in a minute. But the first thing we're going to do is add in our mask. So Shift A, search for mask, pop it over there, and we're going to choose our mask, Leo mask, the one I made up a second ago, and click to connect from mask into the garbage mat. This basically lets Blender know this is the shape we want to mask. It needs inverting, so just Shift A, search for an invert function, and just drop that in between those two nodes there. That's it. So now you can see we've got a mask, so we can't see any of the rest of my kitchen. Um, the next thing we need to do is choose the color that we want to key. So if I just open this up here, you can see it says key color. We're going to click on this. Then we're going to click the little eyedropper tool. And we're going to select a point somewhere around here. Wow, look at that. The blender does a great job straight away. Okay, so we've got a pretty good key straight away. You can, if you need to, just tweak this color up and down a little bit just to fine tune it if you need to, but it's pretty close to begin with. So if you want to just double check that the green screen is doing a good job, we can add something called an alpha over mode. So shift A, search alpha over, and you can drop that on here. Let's just swap the, our keyed image into the bottom slot. Okay, now what you can do is actually change this color to black or to white or to any color you like really and it just helps anything. Actually, we've done such a good job on this key you can't really see anything but you can just, if you need get any sort of black spots or anything over here, you can just dial up the clip black and dial down the clip white and that usually just tidies everything up. Oh, there we go. We can see a little bit there. So let me just show you again that clip white. We've got some little tiny bit of spill. Let me show you a bit closer. Uh, zoom. Okay, so just look at this part here just next to my ear. So we've got the yellow background showing through just here. So by dialing back the clip white, we can just tidy that up and make it all disappear. Okay. So we've got pretty good looking key. So we can reduce, we get rid of the alpha over, alpha over node now and just connect your image back up to your composite. Okay. So the final things we need to do now is output this key ready for us to use. So if you go to your, firstly, go to your film settings just here under the, this is still under the render properties. Make sure transparent is clicked. Then go to your output settings. What we're going to do, we'll save this as a ping file with RGB alpha, so it retains an alpha channel. Um, we're going to set a place to store it. I'll just put, put a new folder here. Leo front. And so Leo front, accept that. And then go to render render animation and Blender will start out putting a load of different ping files, PNG files with the alpha channel ready to use. Okay, we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, so at this point, Blender's finished rendering out all the frames and you should have a folder full of pictures that look kind of like this. So you've kind of got a, what, a basically an alpha background, a, a clear background and um, every different frame of your video file. Okay, so in Blender, I've already built quite a simple scene. We've got uh, a nice Porsche car, a road, um, some concrete blocks, and some trees. These models are all from B Blender Kit. I think they're all free, um, so you should be able to copy this fairly simply. Um, so what we're going to do next, I'm just gonna shift right click on the car to put our 3D cursor in the right place. We're going to go to File, Import, Images as Planes. If you don't have Images as Planes, go to your Preferences and just search for it. It's uh, usually installed by default as Blender. Just click there. Okay. Uh, if we go to our keyed output folder, um, press A to select all your frames and then click where it says Animate Image Sequences. Okay, we're going to click Im Import Images as Planes. Let me just grab this and just move it across a bit. So you can see, 
So we've already got basically the animation in place. Uh, we're just going to clean this material up slightly. If you just go into your shading tab, let's just go into the rendered view. So when uh, when Blender brings this in automatically, you can see it connects up the color and the alpha channel, which is perfect. But uh, we need to turn down the specular. I usually turn all of these down. Turn the roughness up full and turn everything else down. That basically just means we get a better, sort of a better result. So all we do need to do now really is move this inside the car. Hop back into layout view. I'm going to actually, so here I'm supposed to be looking out the window. So we actually need to flip this 180 degrees. So press R, Z, 180. That flips it 180 degrees. So I'm looking out the window. G, X, we're just going to grab me, move me bit more in front of the car. Let's just have a look from the front view. GX. And we're also going to move me back in the car. So G, G to grab, Y to move back. And you just want to move it roughly. So you see where the back of the seat is. Um, you just want to be roughly in the right place. I'm just going to press G to grab, just move it down. I'm just going to scale it down very slightly. I just want to see corners of my shoulders just above the wheel my head in the back in the right place okie doke right let's pop the camera there the important thing to remember is that the focal length 50 millimeters should be roughly the same as what you shot the green screen footage as otherwise it can tend to uh, make the green screen footage look a bit odd so try and keep it roughly where it is um, you actually got a surprisingly amount a surprising amount of latitude you can kind of move up and down a little bit and left and right a little bit and the even though the footage is totally flat in one dimension you still get a fairly good result if you want to have some depth of field in your um, render that basically means the background you want to be slightly out of focus click on depth of field actually select the name of your footage that means you'll be perfectly in focus let's have a quick render okay that looks okay but obviously it's quite dark inside the car so we're going to cheat a little bit we're going to add in I'm just going to shift and right click on here, shift A to add, go to light, go to area light, rotate it on the X axis, grab it on the Z axis. We're just going to add a little bit of extra light, uh, probably 150 watts, just onto the inside of the car. Let's just render that again. Okay, and that's looking a little better. I think maybe 150 watts is a little too bright. I'm just going to tweak that down slightly. Now all that remains to do really is start animating stuff. So what we'll do, we'll add an empty, shift, right click, shift A, add an empty, we'll have arrows. And basically we're going to pair in everything, including the camera and the light to this empty. So we'll start with the Porsche, select all those parts, click on the empty last and press Ctrl and P, set parent to object. Click on the camera, the light, while hold, if you hold down shift when you select, you can select multiple objects. Click on the camera holding shift, click on the light holding shift, click on the empty, press control P to parent, keep the object, keep with the transform. And finally, the footage you've shot, the green screen footage, then the empty, control P, parent to the object. Now you can move this empty, G, and you'll see, let's press G and then Y can actually see everything moves together. So what we can do now is actually set up some animation, have the camera basically parented to the empty, focusing on the, the footage, and we can start animating. Just a final thought really. So obviously the the footage, your green screen footage looks terrible, you know, if you're off, off axis. So always you know try and keep roughly the same axis for the green screen footage and if you want to shoot some side axis when you're shooting your green screen footage shoot some from the side as well and we can drop that in so you can have two different angles to switch to okay just to wrap this up i've spent a bit more time on this scene uh, i've actually added in some camera movement um let me just go to the camera view you can actually see we've got the camera sort of panning slowly in as we're moving but it's still parented to the empty and we've added just a little bit of camera shake to 
to kind of get this final animation. So that's how the scene looks. You can see the car moving along the road. Let's render it out and see what the final animation will look like. <laughs> 